All right, let's see. I will reset my screen and then explain what is going on. And hopefully, Mikael uh, will be okay uh, with this choice, which sort of mixes his talk um, with the uh, with the with the commentary that his slides are actually there and that hopefully they're important. So first of all, also thank you everybody for for actually being here. So this is a this is a great workshop, and I'm glad we got it together. Uh, would have been great to have it part, partially in person as we had originally envisioned, but uh, well, we have Zoom, and so uh, I hope you're well uh, wherever you are. Um, so as Yasi just uh, indicated, our first speaker today uh, is Mikael Oliveira, and Mikael notified us a few minutes ago that he fell sick. It does not sound serious in the long term, at least I hope it's not, but he is not well enough. He says he's not in any shape to give a talk. And so that's very unfortunate and hopefully he will be better soon. And if he ever listens to this video, then <laughs> thank you, Mikael, for being so diligent and, and sending the slides. Now, normally that would mean uh, that the speaker is not there and the slides are not there, but, the, but Mikael was going to talk about a project that I at least have been following for many years. And I, I personally think it's very important for our community. Uh, and uh, a number of people here in the audience also know it and have even contributed to this project. And so I decided to at least walk through the slides a little bit with the, with the important points. And so this is the SECAM uh, Electronic Structure Library at Mikael, uh, together with the curators uh, of the uh, Electronic Structure Library. That's Jan Pouillon, uh, that's uh, Nick Papior uh, in Denmark. Uh, that's um, Martin Luders uh, in Hamburg, uh, Damien Kalist uh, in Grenoble, and Alin Elena uh, in Dasbury. So they've been pushing this forward and, and collecting the electronic structural library for many years. And so that's why this exists. And it really is a bundle or a distribution of libraries that are, that are useful for electronic structure theory. And so Mikael would have <laughs> would have presented this in much more detail than, than, than I will. I will just walk through the slides. So on uh, the bright side, though, this gives us the opportunity to add some discussion uh, uh, to uh, this uh, session. And so what I'll do is uh, I'll actually ask uh, the audience who has used dedicated libraries for electronic structure uh, theory uh, uh, before. Just raise your hands if you did. I know that Anton, for example, I, I did because he's the next speaker and he has a very large library effort, but I guess a number of people have. So Paul is there. Thank you, Paul. Great. Alvaro is there. A number of people. Morat, of course. Yes, great. Perfect. Yeah. And so Susie, of course, who, who knows this project uh, pretty well as well, I think. Yeah, great. Yeah. And so what, what, what the ESL originally was in uh, 2014 was an, was an effort started by uh, um, Emilio Atacho uh, and others. So the first I ever heard of it was an email from, from Emilio saying, we're going to try and put together collective software that can underpin our uh, various projects in one way or another. And the most visible one is probably LibXC, um, almost certainly LibXC. So that's in there. And so this evolved from there, and, and, and one point is important. So I'll say that at the outset, although Mikael has this towards the end of his slides, which is that we just got word from SICAM that another coding workshop in Lausanne has been funded through SICAM. So SICAM uh, has very generously uh, supported this effort over the years with workshops that have about two days of high-level discussions, and then actual coding with, uh, with people uh, who actually have time and, and energy to code and work on libraries uh, to discuss what to do uh, in the same room and then go off and work on some library project that benefits the whole community. And so this is, this is how these workshops have worked. And so uh, there will be another one in October, 2022. And hopefully anybody who, who's interested in this has that on their radar and perhaps a number of people can even uh, go there and contribute. We had one workshop this year and uh, that workshop uh, was uh, held uh, in, in a hybrid slash online fashion due to COVID, but hopefully we'll all get back to being in the same room someday. All right, and so with this, I'll, I'll just walk through briefly. I won't say everything that Mikael said, uh, but does anybody have any questions since we have time for discussion? I, I have one question. Oh, great, great, great. Yes, please. <laughs> 
So is this code actually like uh, uh, available for anyone to use and does it have any limitations with respect to the system size or the type of structure you want to study? Exactly. So it's available to use and it does not have a priori limits uh, with respect to system size or structure, but you do need an electronic structure code on top of it to make use of the libraries. So it's libraries and you can use them in a code, uh, but the code, the executable code has to be built on top of it. Okay, but it's I definitely think... there for, for everybody to use and the, the licenses as much as we could ensure that the licenses are actually um, not restrictive in, in who uses them. So for instance, our own group's uh, contribution was, was trying to be BSD. There's a number of LGPL. There are, few L, there are few GPL libraries in there which are slightly more restrictive, but most of them are, are, are usable as they are. That, that's right. news. Um, I mean, I can ask more questions, but are there any more questions? Or discussions or comments? Yeah. Has anyone used this library before? Indirectly, some people probably have, or components of it, I guess. Yep. Thanks, Anton. <laughs> Yay. Right. So what Michael would have said next is he would have introduced SICAM. And I hope that people are familiar with, with SICAM in the electronic structure community and, and atomistic modeling community, because it's a very important organization to bring together researchers in, uh, in atomistic modeling since, since about 1969. And their, their support for workshops and, 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 and uh, getting people together has been stellar in the community. And of course, it's, it's predominantly Europe-based, but it's it's really uh, global in its reach, I think. Um, this is just about software development, so I won't go much into this except uh, saying that the, the historic model of, of development, if you, if you write a code, is that it becomes somewhat monolithic, and so the idea was to break this up, uh, so that you go away from uh, functions that are code-specific and, and place them in libraries, and eventually, eventually you reuse code. And then the question is, how do you organize these libraries? And how do you actually co-develop these libraries between different codes? And that's what the ESL is about. I will jump through the challenges and say, what is the ESL? So it originally started as a repository uh, of knowledge about software libraries and the libraries were developed elsewhere, uh, but they were developed in the ESL workshops. So in the actual coding workshops that happened over the years. And so they eventually became a collection of software libraries and there is something called the ESL bundle now, which is really a distribution of them. And it, in practice, it's really a broad collaboration of electronic structure software developers from, from, from uh, many different uh, code projects. So uh, you don't have to be Siesta only or GPO only, or perhaps if it's AIMS only, or which other uh, other code uh, contributes to these libraries. Uh, in this case, the question is what, what libraries do we develop that benefit a whole slew of codes? And I could have mentioned uh, all the other codes out there, but I think pretty much everyone, for instance, uses LibXC in one way or another. Um, there's a governance to it. So Mikael uh, has, has led this together with the others for, for, for many years. There's also a steering committee. Uh, but more importantly, the idea is to, to try and, and, and unify aspects around the uh, community. And so may I say that especially things like documentation, uh, trying to, trying to uh, standardize how we communicate our data between different libraries are difficult and, and time consuming. And so this is in parts what, what has also happened, uh, been tried to, to, to foster in ESL. And then there's the bundle, which will show up as in a second. So. This is a picture that was deliberately showing a lot of connections because this was this is the 2020 publication about the, the, the project that shows which, which codes actually we know of using a component and LibXC, as I mentioned in particular, has probably a lot more users uh, than this. Uh, but, uh, but different codes use different libraries in this bundle down here. These are the different libraries that are included. Up here are, are several different codes. And, and so these, these library connections that are drawn here are actually real. They are not invented. So various codes use various libraries. Everyone should be using more, but, but at least we're making some progress. And, and so this hopefully at some point gives rise to a, to a framework where the first principles code becomes the first principles engine built on, on top of libraries that, 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 that we to some extent share. And uh, the more the better. And uh, that, that allow us to, to go about our various tasks. And in fact, uh, 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 
proof of concept uh, code the demonstrator was written about three years ago just to show that you can actually write a viable uh, electronic structure code in, in two weeks out of this and that was shown at one of the ESL workshops yeah and so the bundle itself was the idea to have point releases over time of libraries and, and perhaps interface libraries that interface to others so that there is a coherent evolution of the software and so this bundle is actually then for instance I think the foundation for the Siesta bundle so Siesta uses some libraries and other codes uh, presumably, presumably as well um, and uh, yeah tries to uh, move forward uh, in this way um, the bundle includes the software developed includes other relevant software that's not directly electronic structure but linear algebra so for example the alpa library is in there and also dependencies that are not readily available it, it tries to version things properly uh, it tries to make sure that everything is compatible with one another and there has been one major and minor release every six to 12 months pretty steadily recently there is a common inst common installer in that bundle as well and there are configuration files for easy build and so more can be found at this website that I should not have clicked on, but it doesn't show up on my screen anyway right now. And um, licenses are LGPL, ESD, Mozilla public license are similar. So licenses that are uh, somewhat permissive so that this can actually be used by different code projects. And um, uh, build systems also attempted to be included where possible. And uh, I, I mentioned version control already documentation by possible and, and error handling. That's what we try to do as best practices and promote as best practices. And so then finally, I uh, did want to bring up the workshops. That's an important point. However, it, it appears I have to take a short break because somebody rang my doorbell. And I'm very sorry about this. I was not expecting to give a talk right now, but I think I have to make sure that the person knows <laughs> that I exist. Uh, this is very embarrassing. This should not have happened. I, I will be right back. That's totally fine. So has anyone ever used this library before within their uh, codes? So it's not one library, it's a bundle of libraries. So it's like Libx C, LLP, it's a lot of stuff there, so it's not one. I'm back and I apologize for this. That was very quick. So go ahead. Yeah, this has never happened to me before, I think. But it's the beauty of our uh, COVID uh, stretch. Yeah. But maybe this break is good because this is really the key point that I wanted to uh, bring to everyone's attention from Mikhail's uh, talk, which is that the ESL workshops exist. And so beyond writing code, which is actually a very important um, objective, of course. So divided into coding sessions and two to three days of discussions. This also creates links that in my view, anybody would not otherwise have. So because we're all busy with our own code projects, it's difficult to find the time even, even if in the best of cases uh, to talk to one another, I think across code projects. And so I would certainly not have been able to uh, connect to all the other code projects that, that, that I just showed you if it hadn't been for the ESL, which really opens this space and, and really broadens the community uh, in, in a good way, uh, I think, for all of us. And so importantly, there is an upcoming workshop that was just funded. That is uh, the central point. So you have a nice view from where that workshop is, because this is the EPFL campus, and that's where these workshops have mostly happened in the past few years. And so this one will happen October 10 through 2022. One can apply to SICAM, the standard application process for workshops and i think everyone is welcome there so the broader we can make this effort uh, the better uh, for for all, all our community and the workshop is fittingly named best practices and tools that's that's really what we want to um, uh, move forward if we can right and so that's you want to know more uh, where to find the esl there are the software repositories on gitlab and, and github uh, there's, as I mentioned before, there's a paper in 2020 that tries to explain the paradigm and how to move this forward. And it 
one thing that to me is impressive is that it has a lot of co-authors. So a lot of people contributed you know, over time to this. And so hopefully, hopefully we can move this forward. And as I said, again, several of you are actually here. So thank you to those who, who did that. Yeah. And these are the acknowledge acknowledgements and you can pick out for yourselves who, who is actually in the room or who might have been. Uh, these people started the effort. I mean, seeded the effort, I think in uh, 2014, together with the SICAM uh, steering committee and, and SICAM as a whole has supported this very generously. And so we're very grateful for that. Thank you for listening. And hopefully I gave an adequate impression of what Michael would have talked about without usurping too much of, of what is really the uh, accomplishment of, of uh, Michael and that whole group who did that. Thanks. Questions? Thank you, Walker. Are there any questions? or comments or discussion? Okay, so we have one in the chat. Our previous, um, so this is just a general, I think it's just related to the materials of the workshops and they're asking if the materials are available online. That's a question uh, I believe to Alvaro maybe, or you can answer. We should, we should um, send the question to Alvaro since Alvaro is probably the person who has the best practical knowledge. Oh, they're asking for the CCAM workshops. Oh, for the CCAM workshops? Not most of them, I think. And that's because the discussions, although I don't know for the last one, uh, but Anton might know. I think that's, uh, um, that's, uh, right, so the, the previous, previous CCAM workshop uh, materials, I think are not, specifically online, although I might be wrong. So the, the place to check, however, is the ESL website. What is, of course, online are the products, right? So the most important products are the actual software. And then Aurora asked, is anyone aware of similar efforts associated with statistical mechanics data and software with respect to library and development, I mean? And here, I'm not sure if there's a formal bundle of any sort. Um, we have occasionally discussed, and I'm actually, actually, I'm still hoping that this will eventually happen to include things like IPI, which is really statistical mechanics in, in, in the molecular simulation sense, to include that in the bundle, but I think it hasn't happened. Uh, and that's because it doesn't quite have the same shape in, in the ESL as, uh, as the remaining libraries. So it's not underneath the electronic structure code, but above. But here, Python tools, yes. Um, I see Paul Kent's hands is up. So Paul, go ahead. Thanks for doing the presentation, Volker. This is a follow on from what you just said. I was wondering if you knew a little bit more about what might be added to ESL next, and also how that was how that's going to be decided. So how this project is going to be steered in the future, because obviously, it could broaden out. Uh, in many different directions. Right. So the steering is, and this is this is this actually answers part of the question: How is it decided? Because that's what one would do. Um, where's the governance? Right. The steering is really such that uh, ideally one contacts the curating team. The steering committee actually approves. Eventually, that's the main form of the steering committee. So historically, this has worked by uh, Michael or uh, one of the others um, organizing a bundle release and making sure that what, uh, what, what, what has been in is updated to newest versions. And I think uh, um, the approval for the next release was actually just given. I think I clicked approve this morning, actually, because I'm, I'm on the steering committee. Um, and so the curating committee has to be convinced that the software is, is, is useful, but also that it's maintainable within their time or that somebody is willing to, to help maintain it if that's not the case. But generally uh, it's an open and accessible process or it should be. The, the other best way in a sense, of course, is to go to, uh, to attend one of the workshops in some form and then try to, uh, try to make things happen from, from there. That's the process. So the curating committee should know. And the steering committee, of course, is there uh, to oversee that. Thanks. And I would say this can actually be taken to any any further level. 
the main limitation is, is, is human time, uh, as always in our software projects, right? For, for somebody to make sure that this is long-term uh, sustainable.